السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد First and foremost, I'd like to take this time out in mentioning the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wherein he said لا يشكر الله من لا يشكر الناس that he does not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly the one who does not thank the people so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the organization of this masjid in facilitating this talk may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala count it amongst your good deeds and grant you all khair and success Allahumma ameen <coughs> secondly uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward those as well who have attended May Allah Jalla wa ala also count it amongst your good deeds and grant you all success too. Allahumma ameen. The Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was salam, he says as it comes in the hadith, May yuridillahu bihi khayran yufaqihu fi ad-deen. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wants khair for, he wants goodness for, Allah Jalla wa ala he gives that person the understanding of the religion. Likewise, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, من سلك طريقا يلتمس فيه علما سهل الله له طريقا إلى الجنة. فهم سأبا takes a path in seeking knowledge then Allah subhanahu wa taala he makes the path to Jannah to paradise easy for him. so the fact that Allah subhanahu wa taala has decreed and he willed that you all sit here today listening to this lecture listening to the ayat of Allah and the hadith of his messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم that Allah جل وعلا he wants خير for you. He wants goodness for you. The fact that he allowed you Jalla wa ala, in his infinite wisdom to gather you all here into this masjid and that you are not out on the streets what people do usually on a Friday night. Wallahu musta'an. But that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed and he chose to gather you in his house seeking beneficial knowledge for his sake alone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us all. Ameen. Then the lecture the talk for today is as it is mentioned in the in social media on the posters and whatnot the day of judgment and i'm sure that before this talk you had a series of other talks talking about uh, preparing for death and also after that the life in the grave so then we want to talk about that what happens after death when a person is in his grave either he is in pleasure blessings or he is being punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa billah. What happens after that? Because it does not stop there. This is where the topic, it comes in. Yawm al-Hisab, the day of judgment. And of course, that is the Arabic way of saying it. Yawm al-Hisab, the day of accounting or judgment. And every single one of us in this room knows about this day knows about what will occur insha'Allah on that day and what will happen to the people. This word, Yawm al-Hisab, the day of resurrection. Of course, in the Arabic, we know what Yawm means. It means a day. It can mean a 24-hour period or it can mean much more than that, a long period of time. Usually, it's used to refer to either a day or a night or both of them in the Arabic language nonetheless. And this word al-hisab, it means to count something. Al-ud, to count it. Likewise, it can also mean jaza, yani to reward something or reward somebody with something. For example, it is said in the Arabic language, hasabahu, meaning he has been rewarded with something or he has been accounted with something. And this is something that we all know. For example, when you go to the shops and you buy things or when you go to order food or whatever the case is, what do you get back? A receipt. And on that receipt, what does it show you? Everything that you've ordered. This is known as al-hisab. Then of course, that's when you need to pay. When you buy the food, it tastes nice. But when obviously the receipt comes, that's when it doesn't taste good. So you have to what, pay up now. As the phrase, it goes, yani give me the receipt or what's the damage? Because you know that you're going to have to pay up for what you bought. Likewise, yom al-hisab, the day of accounting, Every single person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him or her 
in regards to his or her statements and actions and what they did in this dunya nonetheless. Every single Prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to mankind, of course Allah jalla wa ala, He sent the Prophets as warners and messengers to their people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He said, وَلَقَدَ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ We sent to every single nation a messenger calling them to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone with no partners and that they should stay away from the taghut, the false deities. Every single prophet that Allah jalla wa ala sent came with this message, this universal message of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And of course, this is the objective of life. Allah jalla wa ala, he said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا ليعبدون. I did not create mankind nor jinn except to worship me alone. This is the answer to the question, what is the meaning of life? What is my purpose in this dunya? And so on and so forth. The only reason you are here, the only reason why you wake up and you sleep and that you breathe and eat and so on and so forth is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you for his worship. This is the purpose, your purpose in life. Every single messenger came with this simple message. And of course, they warned against shirk, which is the unforgivable sin. But they also warned their nation of a day to come. A day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will gather all of mankind and ask them about what they used to do. Having Iman in the last day, Yawm Al-Akhir, the Yawm Al-Hisab, the Day of Judgment, to have belief in it, it is from our core fundamental beliefs as Muslims, from our Aqeedah. Like it comes in the famous hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam, where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was approached by a man, and of course this man in, in this form was Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. And he said, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, tell me about Iman. So then the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam told him that Iman is to believe in Allah, his messengers, his books, the angels, and the last day. This is from our aqeedah, our belief that we believe in the last day, that it will occur, that all life on this earth will come to an end. It is from our Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, as it comes in Surah Al-Baqarah, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ طِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ That it is not from piety or goodness and piety is not that you face the east or the west, but rather true piety, true birr and goodness is that you have Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first and foremost. You have Iman in Allah jalla wa ala, and the last day. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specified belief in the hereafter, or the last day or the day of judgment. So the one who denies this day of judgment, the one who denies the akhirah, the hereafter, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to him as a disbeliever. Allah jalla wa ala, he says in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَكْفُرُ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُولِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Whomsoever disbelieves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his angels and his books and his messengers and the last day, then he has surely strayed far from the path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that the one who denies the day of, resur the, the day of resurrection, the day of judgment, then such a person is misguided. And like the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, he told us, وَكُلُّ الضَّلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Every single form of misguidance leads to the hellfire. However, this day of judgment, this Yawm al-Hisab, it has many different names. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to this day in different ways in the Qur'an. Does anybody know? What are the names of the day of resurrection? The first one, of course, if you know, is Yawm al-Hisab, the day of <coughs> judgment. There are other names that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to Yawm al-Qiyamah as. Anybody know? Yawm al-Qiyamah, the most famous one, the day of standing. Anything else? Yawm al-Din, the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call all of mankind to account. Yawm al Yawm al-Haq, the day of truth. Anything else? as saa Ahsantum, the hour. Allah Jalla wa Ala referred to it as as saa What else? Zalzala. Anything else? 
Al-Qari'a. Anything else? al -Sakha. These are the events that take place on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Anybody else? Yawm Al-Fasl. At-Taghabun. Allah Jalla wa Ala mentions all of these names for Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Why? Why did Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala choose so much names for this day? For what reason? Why couldn't you just say Yawm Al-Qiyamah throughout the whole Quran? Or Yawm Al-Hisab? Why do you have to give so much names to this day? Why? Anybody know? Is it maybe because it signifies how long the day will be and or how long the day is? And mm. there's so many events happening in that day. So to signify what will happen on that day because many events therein will <coughs> take place. That's an answer. MashaAllah, anything else? The importance of the day. Jazakallahu khair. The Arabs, when they speak about a certain affair, they tend to repeat it often. Maybe by repeating the phrase three times, or they might refer to it with many names, nonetheless, to show its importance. And of course, like you said, many events will take place that day. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to Yawm al-Qiyamah with such names, with different, different names, is to show its importance so that people will understand what's going to take place truly on that day. Because every single prophet, every single messenger warned their people of this day. Because it's going to be a great day and a hard day, especially for the disbelievers that like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned. So the first name, there are many names. We're not going to go through all of them. But the main names that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in regards to the day of judgment is Yawm al-Qiyamah, for example. The day of standing. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, وَيْلٌ لِلْ مطففين الذين إذا اكتالوا على الناس يستوفون وإذا كالوهم أو وزنوهم يخسرون Then Allah Jalla wa Ala, what does he say? ألا يظن أولئك أنهم مبعوثون ليوم عظيم يوم يقوم الناس لرب العالمين Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying Woe to those people that when they take measurements they take in full. Yani when you go to the marketplace and you measure something, you buy something, the, the, the person selling it, he wants to take all of your wealth, every single penny that you have. Very stingy. But when it comes to giving the actual, uh, the, the, the actual item or whatever it is, they give you in short. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reprimanded these people for such a sin. Then Allah jalla wa ala, he said, أَلَا يَظُنُّ أُولَٰئِكَ أَنَّهُمْ مَبْعُوثُونَ don't those people think that they are going to be resurrected? Yani every, not just this one sin, but every sin that the son of Adam commits, whatever sin I commit or you commit or we commit, we need to ask ourselves this question. Do we not know that we're going to be resurrected? Every single one of us knows that we're going to be resurrected. We're going to die and then we're going to be resurrected in front of Allah. Jalla wa ala. <coughs> but why does that not register in our minds? Why is it that we allow ourselves to fall into this trap of sin time and time again? Don't they think that they're going to be resurrected? Don't you know? Of course you know. Everybody knows. Then why carry on in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do they not think that they are not going to be resurrected again? For a tremendous and great day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he called that day a tremendous and great day. لِيَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ Why is it great? Why is it so tremendous? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, يَوْمَ يَقُومُ النَّاسُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ It is going to be the day when all of mankind, from the time of Adam alayhi salatu salam until the last man on earth, every single one of them will stand in front of Allah, Lord of all creation. And they will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for judgment. And Allah Jalla wa Ala, He refers to this day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions in the Quran that one day in the sight of your Lord, one day that we live through with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is 50,000 years. One day in the Akhirah is 50,000 years. So next time you fall short, think to yourself. You are going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a standing of 50,000 years. You can't even stand for half an hour without moving your legs. A standing in front of Allah jalla wa ala, the day, the length of which is what? 
50,000 years. You can't even comprehend that. Nobody can comprehend that. But by Allah, it will occur and it will happen. When everyone, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands all creation to stand in front of him, we all wait for our judgment. And of course, we know what's going to happen on that day when the sun will be low above our heads and many people will be drowning in their sweat, scared and shocked. A man would run away from his wife. A son would run away from his own mother. Families would not want to know each other. That day, everyone is an enemy one to another, except for the righteous, except for the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed, except for the ones who kept the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, it reminds me of this hadith, subhanAllah. It reminds me of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was salam, wherein he said, as is found in Bukhari and Muslim, he said, Sab'atun yudhilluhumullahu fi dhillihi yawma la dhillu, dhilla illa dhilluhu on that day, there will be seven people, seven types of people who will be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the day that there is no shade except for his shade. Before I continue with this hadith, think about this. The sun over your head, standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, waiting to be held account for what you did. But on that day, there will be seven types of people, not seven people, but seven types of people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect. They will be under the throne of Allah jalla wa ala, under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not going through any hardship. Of course, we want to be from amongst those people, do we not? Bala, the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wa salam, he said, as for these seven types of people who will be under the shade of Allah, the day that there is no shade except for his, the first one he said, al-imamu al-adilu, the righteous ruler, somebody whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed as a ruler amongst the people, the Muslim ruler who is just, then he shall remain under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day when there is no shade except for his. Then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, وَشَابٌ شَابٌ نَشَأَ فِي عِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ wa ta'ala. A young man, a young person, who grew up worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, for many, in this, many of us in this room, uh, we don't, we're not really shaba, we, we're not young. But for those who are young, those who are still young and at this young tender age, then glad tidings to you. This is good news for you. The Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, he said that a young person who grows up in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be under the shade of Allah Jalla wa ala, the day when there is no shade except for his. And that should put into perspective for you how you should act and behave, whether it's at home or in school, in the masjid or outside there on the street. Do you want to grow up in an environment that's harmful to you? The Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, is telling you if you grow up <coughs> worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you'll be under his shade the day. The, the, the day when there is no shade except for his. A young person who grows up in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something for parents also to realize that your children that you have, when they grow up, give them an Islamic upbringing. Give them an upbringing that is يعني, an upbringing of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Teach them the Quran. Teach them the deen. Teach them adab and akhlaq. Tell them the stories of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba. Instill that love in the heart for the young people. For verily the one, like the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wa sallam said, whoever grows up in the worship of Allah, he will be under his shade yawm al-qiyamah. Then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَرَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ A man whose heart or his heart is attached to the masjid. That every time he comes to the masjid, he wants to be in the masjid. He comes and he prays his salah. And after the salah, he sits down in the masjid. He reads Quran. His heart is attached to the masjid. And of course, when he goes home or he goes to do his business, he's ready to come back to the masjid again for the next salah. The messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam told us that such a person whose heart is attached to the masjid, then he will be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on yawm al-qiyamah. Then he said alayhi salatu wasalam, وَرَجُلًا Two people who 
They love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only for His sake. And every time they meet, they meet for the sake of Allah jalla wa ala. They don't meet so that they can go and sin and disobey Allah. They don't meet so that they can waste their time. They meet, why? For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's meet up together to go to the masjid. Let's meet up together to go pray salah. Let's meet up together to go to the lecture. Let's meet up together so we can read the Quran, the book of Allah, and test each other and so on and so forth. This is a type of relationship and companionship that you should have and hold. That you love a person for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You join, you come together upon that and you leave based upon that as well. Like the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said. And then he alayhi salatu wa salam, he said, in regards to the one who is under the shade of Allah on the day of resurrection, وَرَجُلٌ طَلَبَتْهُ إِمْرَأَةٌ ذَاتُ مَنْصِبٍ وَجَمَالٍ فَقَالْ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهِ A man who if a woman, this woman, she might be a woman of honor and beauty, and she calls him to evil, and he responds to her and he says, إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهِ Verily I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he doesn't fall into this sin. Such a person deserves the shade of Allah Jalla wa ala yawm al qiyamah Because such a sin is easy for anybody to fall into. If somebody, a woman, was to call someone to do haram or whatever the case is, speaking, meeting up, and whatever the case is, wa iyadun billah, a person, he says, inni akhaf Allah, he says to, I fear Allah Jalla wa ala, I don't want to involve myself in any of this. Such a person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shades yawm al qiyamah then the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wa salam, he said, وَرَجُلٌ تَصَدَّقَ تَصَدَّقَ أَخْفَى حَتَّى لَا تَعْلَمَ شِمَالَهُ مَا تُنْفِقُ يَمِينَهُ or يَمِينُهُ The aman, when he gives sadaqa, he gives sadaqa for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives so much sadaqa that his left hand does not know what his right hand gave in sadaqa. Meaning he doesn't look at what he has in his pocket. He doesn't look at, how, he doesn't count his pennies for, the, for, 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 for saving or anything of the sort. He puts his hand into his pocket and he gives for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Somebody asks him for sadaqah, he needs help. What does he do? He gives him more. Because he knows that his wealth comes from Allah jalla wa ala. And of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant him more wealth and place barakah in that wealth. So the one who continuously gives sadaqah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to any cause, to poor people, to the masjid, to spread da'wah and so on and so forth, such a person is under the shade of Allah Jalla wa ala yawm al-qiyamah. And then the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wa salam, he said, Rajulun dhakar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khaliyan fafadat aynah. The aman who sits alone privately, he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his two eyes begin to tear. He cries due to the khawf and the khashya, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you find yourself that you are secluded and you remember Allah Jalla wa ala, and you cry over your sins and you weep over your sins and you cry out of fearing Allah Jalla wa ala, then such a person is deserving to be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yawm al qiyamah. These are those people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he blessed. These are those people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen that when all of creation stand in front of him waiting to be held account for what they did from evil, that these are the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect on that day. May Allah jalla wa ala make us from them. Ameen. From the names of the day of resurrection that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to in the Quran is al-waqi'ah. Al-waqi'ah, the event or the great event that is to occur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِذَا وَقَعَتِ الْوَاقِعَةِ لَيْسَ لِوَقَعَتِهَا كَاذِبَةِ when the great event occurs, when this waqi'ah, this event of Yawm Al-Qiyamah occurs, there is no denying it. Nobody is able to deny it. Maybe now they are able to deny it. People, they deny it due to their arrogance. And they think that they know better and so on and so forth. They say that, you know, this, this, this is a fairy tale. We die, we become dust and bones, and that is it. Atheism. And this is something that Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in his time, the Mushrikun, they used to say the same thing. What do you mean, O oh Muhammad? We're going to die and that's it? Uh, are we going to be resurrected again? No. Their belief is that we die, we become dust and bones, and that is it. There is no hereafter. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us 
that when the event occurs, when this day of resurrection comes, then there is absolutely no denying it. Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran speaks about this day. And if, for us to understand the way Allah Jalla wa ala, He talks about this day of resurrection as if it's going to come, how can this be a lie? Because these non Muslims, they say, of course, those who are atheists, they don't believe in the Quran. They say it's something that's made up, it's a fairy tale, it's just stories. But when you read what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying with so much conviction, so much surety, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that we, will, we, we promise that we're going to gather you all together. There will be a resurrection, the event will happen, the trumpet will be blown. Somebody who speaks like this is not somebody who's making something up. You can't make something up like that unless you are actually and really sure. And of course, these are the, this, the, the, the Quran is the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the words of Allah jalla wa ala and of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, he does not speak except that which is true. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to that day as al waqia the great event that is to occur. And that when it occurs, there will be nobody to deny it. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he refers to the day of resurrection as as saa the hour. Allah jalla wa ala, he says, inna saa'ata. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us, verily, the hour, the hour, the day of resurrection is coming, but most of mankind, they do not believe. And this is something which is true. How many people are there on the earth? About 7 billion, 8 billion? How many Muslims are there? 1.2, 1.8? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the hour is, com- is coming. It's getting closer and closer, day by day, night by night, year by year. The resurrection, the hour, the sa'a is coming. But most of mankind, they do not believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, back then, 1400 years ago, this revelation was sent down from Allah. Jalla wa ala, and it still stands true today that the most, most of mankind, the majority of mankind, they don't truly don't believe in this hour. Rather they are in ghafla, they are in an, a, a state of heedlessness in regards to the hour. And of course, nobody knows when the hour will occur. Allah Jalla wa ala, He says, Inna Allah indahu ilmu sa'a. Verily to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs the knowledge of the hour. No prophet on earth, nor any angel in heaven knows the hour. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in its infinite knowledge and wisdom knows when this hour will occur. But upon us as believers is to submit and believe. So the definition of the day of resurrection, when you look at the different names, you look at what will occur, the ulama, they define this term or this phrase, Yawm al-Qiyamah or Yawm al-Hisab, the day of, resur- uh, of resurrection. Imam Tabi rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned in his tafsir, he says, in regards to the last day, he said, huwa al-Yawm, yani Yawm al-Qiyamah, it is the day of resurrection wherein there is no day after it. It is the last day. There is no day after because of course in order to have a day, you need day and night. In the Akhirah, there is no such thing. There is no days after the hereafter, after Yawm Al-Qiyamah. It is only but eternity. Eternity in paradise or eternity in the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from it. Ameen. So he says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, it is a day after which there is no day. It is the day when the souls will return back to their bodies. When Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, commands the angel to blow the trumpet, we're going to mention that too, inshallah. Every single person in their graves, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will return the soul to their body and they will be resurrected ready for judgment in front of Allah Jalla wa ala. Then he says, وَتَبْعَثُوا فِيهِ الْخَلَائِقِ لِلْجَزَاءِ وَالْحِسَابِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect every single person from the time of Adam alayhi salatu salam until the last man so that they can stand in wait for their accounting so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may reward them with either goodness or reward them with evil for what they used to do. And this demonstrates to us certain fruits or certain benefits that we can extract from this. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have a day of resurrection? For what reason? The ulama they mention, حَثُّ الْعَبْدِ عَلَى فِعْلَ الطَّاعَاتِ 
والمسابقة إلى الخيرات رغبة في الثواب الكائن في ذلك اليوم The reason as to why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the day of resurrection, he has a day of resurrection, is that the, the, so the slave, that's me and you, the slaves, they can increase in good deeds. Yani they have this desire to do good deeds and they race with one another to do this goodness, to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do. Why? Because if we do it, Allah jalla wa ala rewards us in the hereafter. This is one of the reasons to why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the day of resurrection and he warns us against it so that we may do good deeds. Not because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs our deeds, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need none of his creation. Rather, we are in need of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are the ones who need those good deeds in order to enter paradise. Of course, no one will enter paradise with his deeds alone. Not even the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam. But they will only enter paradise by way and through the mercy of Allah jalla wa ala. The second reason as to why we believe in a hereafter. Then the ulama they mention, دَفْعُ الْعَبْدِ إِلَىٰ تَرْكِ الْمَعَاصِي وَالْمُنْكَرَاتِ That we, or the slaves, they leave off sinning against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they leave off evil habits and deeds and so on and so forth. Because this day, if you truly believe in it, as every Muslim should, then it should cause a fear in your heart that next time you're going to embark on something haram or evil, think twice. Think twice before you do anything of that sort because you have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yawm al-qiyamah. And sometimes don't fool yourselves that you think I'm alone. Nobody is watching. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, وَمَا يَلْفِضُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ That mankind, he does not utter any word except that he has Two, two angels who record it and they write it in a book that is specific to you a record that they have and that on Yawm Al-Qiyamah everyone will get either from his left or his right hand billah. also from the point that the ulama mentioned in regards to this day of resurrection they say Tasliyatul Mu'min Amma Yafutahu Min Na'im Dunya Wa Mata'iha that the believer he will then enjoy the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which he did not enjoy in the dunya. And he will get that in the hereafter. Because of course, we as believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sanctioned that we can do certain stuff and not do certain stuff. And that's, those things that we cannot do, they might look to us as something which is fun or entertainment and so on and so forth. Like for example, drinking of alcohol. It looks fun. Of course, shaitan has deceived mankind in regards to it. We know the evil effects of it. But for the believer who has not drank it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that in paradise they will drink it. And of course that will be a wine or an alcohol or, or, or a wine, sorry, that won't have any yani, intoxication within it. Likewise, everything that you see from the pleasures of the dunya that you're not able to get, perhaps you don't have the wealth to get it and so on and so forth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward it to you in the hereafter. That nice car that you wanted, that big house or mansion, this wealth, gold and silver that you never got in this dunya, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward the patient believer for it in the hereafter. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees for the people, those who believe to enter paradise, they will enjoy these pleasures, that which they, that which they never enjoyed in the dunya. And then they mention the scholars rahimahumullah in regards to the fourth uh, reason as to why we believe in this day, وقوف العبد على فضل الله تبارك وتعالى وعدله في المجازات على الأعمال الصالحة والسيئة. So that then the slave receives justice. This demonstrates the great justice justice of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the hereafter. Because of course this world is full of criminals, full of people who are evil, and when they die, they might get away with it in the dunya. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will establish His justice يوم القيامة. They can run away from me and you, but on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, they will not be able to run away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who killed Muslims in this dunya, and they think that they got away with it, do not think that they've got away with it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he did not uh, reprimand them or hold them to account in this dunya by way of whatever thing, in the hereafter, surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish them. And Allah jalla wa ala will send his justice upon them. 
So the believer, this is how he thinks when he sees the oppression of the Muslims in the world, whether it's in Palestine or in Burma or Iraq or, or Syria or Yemen, wherever it is, you see that Muslims are being slaughtered, harmed, oppression, dhulm, the taking of rights and so on and so forth. Don't think that they die in vain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will establish his justice yawm al qiyamah and then nobody will able to get away from it. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this day of resurrection so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can reward the doers of good and punish those who are evil. So how will this day of resurrection occur? Does anybody know? How is it going to occur? How will it start? The, the trumpet will be blown. And of course, in Arabic, this is known as Asur, Asur, the trumpet will be blown into by the angel whose name is Israfil. And the ahadith are some narrations that mention that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this angel and he created the trumpet, Allah jalla wa ala ordered him to place his mouth upon the trumpet and his eyes are fixed at the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waiting for the command. And that this angel, he's taken a breath already. That he's taken his breath to blow into the trumpet. But he does not blow into it. But he waits for the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His eyes are fixated upon the arsh of Allah jalla wa ala. Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the order to blow into the trumpet, then he will do so. And that is how the day of resurrection or the, or the, or the day of standing will occur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, the day when, they, when the angel he blows into the horn and then all of mankind will come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in groups. Mujahid, who is from the students of Ibn Abbas, عنه, he described what this horn would look like. He said, that this horn, it's in the shape of a trumpet. And of course, you've seen what a trumpet looks like, correct? Not the trumpet that you have, the brass golden trumpets, but rather, I've took a picture for it so you can all see, inshallah. These are trumpets that were known in the past. Made from the bone or the horns of goats and rams, nonetheless. That's if I've saved it on my phone. In fact, I haven't. But nonetheless, if you have seen a horn, the horn of a ram, you all know what a ram is, right? They have big horns. If this is hollow, then this is known as al book or a trumpet that is used to blow within. It resembles this. I have it here for you, inshallah. This is a book and this is what Mujahid radiallahu anhu rahimahullah ta'ala he described the trumpet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to look like not exactly like this of course but something similar to it this is known as al-book it is huge a great trumpet that this angel Israfil will blow into and when he blows into it what will occur after that is a great blast which is known as a sayha or a zajra a blast or a shout or a scream that is so loud, Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah ta'ala, he describes and he says that everything in creation, every single particle in creation would shake and it will be destroyed. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the angel to blow into this, into this uh, horn or this trumpet, the whole heavens and the earth will cease to exist. Allah jalla wa ala, he says, وَنُفِخَ فِي suri فَصَاعِقَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ نُفِخَ فِيهِ أُخْرَى فَإِذَا هُمْ قِيَامٌ يُنْظُرُونَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he commands there will be two blasts. The first blast in the horn, everything in the heavens and the earth will fall into swoon. It will fall into ruin. It will be destroyed. Except that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remains to stay. And of course when we read these hadith, 
it's mentioned that the Arsh, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remain and the Qalam will remain and the Lawh al-Mahfud will remain. And the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, when the angel he blows into it a second time, everyone will be resurrected and I will see Musa, Moses standing, holding the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said alayhi salatu wasalam, I do not know if he fell due to the first blast or that he survived it. Because there will be th certain things that will survive this blast. And it is said that Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, would also survive this blast, Yom al Qiyamah. Because he went through a blast himself when he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, either I want to see you. And of course, Allah says, Lan tarani, you will not be able to see me. And of course, when Allah he manifested himself upon the mountain, it fell in ruin. And then Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, he uh, fell into swoon and he fainted nonetheless. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands this angel to blow into the horn, all of creation will cease to exist as we know it. And then we will stand in front of Allah Jalla wa Ala for judgment. And of course, we all know what will happen on that day. And this is a lecture that's going to happen next month, known as the great or the, the intercession before Allah. Not next month, I believe in the next couple of months or a few months. The intercession before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is going to be a day so frightening that even the prophets alayhi salatu wasalam. You imagine the prophets of Allah, those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, is pleased with, he gave them the risala and so on and so forth, they will fear this day and they will say, Allahumma sallim sallim. Oh Allah, grant us safety and security. If they are going to be afraid, then what about us? Like we mentioned, this standing will be a 50,000 years in front of Allah Jalla wa ala. And then there will be something known as the mizan, the scales. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command the scales to appear or come. And these scales are actual scales that have two pans. And Allah Jalla wa ala will weigh the deeds of mankind in them. Good deeds and bad deeds. And like Allah Jalla wa ala, he says in Surah Al-Qari'ah, Allah Jalla wa ala, he says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةِ الرَّاضِيَةِ that the one who fills his scale with good deeds, then he will have, or he will live a happy life in the hereafter. Then Allah Jalla wa Ala, he says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُمُّهُ هَاوِيَةً As for the one whose deeds are light, they are not heavy, they are light, then his refuge, his place will be the Hawiyah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا هِيَةً What will make you know what this Hawiyah is, Allah Jalla wa Ala, He said, Narun Hamiya. A blazing hot fire that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cast those who are disobedient and disbelievers. And also on that day, there will be something known as the Sirat, the bridge over the hellfire. In the hadith, it is mentioned that it is as sharp as a sword. Sharp as a sword. And the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, many people, they will pass over this bridge at different speeds. Some of them will pass slowly. Some of them will pass very fast and so on and so forth due to the deeds that they did, if they were righteous or not. And those, of course, who fell short in their deeds, they will fall in. And upon the sides of this bridge, there will be what is known as a shoka or claws, huge claws that will trap the people and cut the people and make them fall into the hellfire wa iyadun billah Allah Jalla wa Ala, He mentions this bridge in the Quran He says subhanahu wa ta'ala wa in minkum illa wariduha kana ala rabbika hatman maqdiya He says every single one of you will have to pass over it this is something with your lord decreed this cannot be stopped there is no ease in it just like the standing of the Day of Resurrection, there might be ease in it for some people. As for this Sirat, then no. It depends upon your deeds. If you are good, then you will pass with ease. But if a person is evil and bad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause him to fall into the hellfire. May Allah Jalla wa Ala protect us from it. So we make dua to Allah Jalla wa Ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability and the tawfiq to prepare for this day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the evil of that day. And may Allah jalla wa ala gather us just like he has gathered us here in this masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us in Jannatul Firdaus. 
Allahumma ameen. Whatever I have said that is correct, then it's from Allah and Allah alone. And whatever I have said from mistake, then it is from me and the shaitan. Wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in.